The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here in The Ben Heck Show, we get a lot of great ideas. Emails come in from all over the world for projects that people want to see us build. One cool idea that came in was from a woman whose partner lost his arm in an accident. Okay, Ben, I'm, I'm Ian Pierce. I used to have a band but then you know life gets in the way i i got married i had to get another job and the job uh, was working on the railway and one night uh, i was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and i i had a a railway wagon right over my right arm and that was the end of playing the guitar i've tried over the years to um uh, make little uh, inventions in order to uh, strum the guitar, but they were never really very effective. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what you can actually, uh, what you come up with. So I'm like, hey, that's a really cool project. That would be a great way to kick off our new season. So the idea I came up with is, is a foot pedal. The foot pedal can do the strumming fast, slow, and then, you know, if you want to lift the pickup, that could be a secondary pedal like this. So uh, we need to get a guitar, we need to find a foot pedal, and we're probably going to have to do a lot of mechanical engineering and 3D printing. So I think it's time that we get started on this new guitar strumming project. Okay, so this is Tyler. He's a local musician who's going to help us with this guitar project. Thank you for coming on the show, Tyler. Thanks for having me. And uh, for this project, we're thinking, they're going to use a foot to strum the guitar, a foot pedal. Yeah, you got these cool connectors at Full Compass. Full Compass, yes. It looks like it's like an XLR base, but it has Ethernet inside of it. Yeah, RJ45. So what we're thinking we're going to do is we're going to build these right into this thing. And we're actually going to 3D print a replica of that panel, put it right there, so we can put these ports into it. So what is this plug called again? It is an EtherCon connector. EtherCon. It sounds like a convention for like bootleggers. So I'm guessing that uh, we probably want this shielding behind the plastic and then this in front of it. Yeah. So there'll be a little bit of space like that. And then when you thread the screws through, that's what will actually hold it in place. So we'll need to model this shape here, make sure there's a gap for our lever, and then the two screw holes. But that's not a problem. I'm using Autodesk 123D Catch, which is a free program that Autodesk provides. Uh, it's not as complicated as Inventor or SolidWorks, but for this kind of stuff, it's perfectly adequate and free. So in this case, as far as modeling is concerned, I'm going to get the main shape for starters. And I need to replace these dial calipers, but they're good for one more battle. All right, so I'm just going to kind of put it, yeah, let's put it here. And I'm going to do this sideways, actually, so there's more room. So the height of it is going to be 1.21 inches, and the width is going to be something else. That'll give us our base shape, and then we can draw everything else inside of that. 1.222. While Ben is designing the 3D printed insert for the Ernie Ball VP Junior, I am going to cut the perf board so we can attach it to the RJ45 connector, which makes it easier for us to attach wire leads to it. So this is a jig for the servo. Uh, I'm just cutting it out of some cheap wood before we do the good stuff. And what we can do with the jig is we can place it on the guitar and figure out where it's gonna go. Then we can make the marks to actually cut through the guitar so we can mount the servo. Then when we make the real deal, we can make a larger plate, which will cover over our not so great looking manually cut holes. Here's Jig 
I put a slit in it that indicates where the center of the servo is. It'll make it easier to align when we attach it to the guitar. I'm going to tape down the jig so we can mark it off so the holes will be nice and accurate. So yeah, using a laser to cut uh, jigs is a really nice use for it because um, cutting jigs out of cheap wood or uh, paper cardstock um, that way you can make sure things are going to work and it's, you don't know, ruin your expensive material. There's going to be other holes put in this guitar as well for like controls and circuits, but we're just doing one thing at a time. We make the arm work, then we make the pickup work, then we put in the potentiometers. Rusty's uh, the new guy to help us out with some projects, so welcome aboard Rusty. Hello. And you're also a musician, so you know a lot of things about guitars too. Yeah, yeah, this is a very interesting project for me. Cool, and I'm glad that the first project you get to work on was something, you know, that you're interested in. So, we have, while you're, before you got here this morning, we put this into the guitar, and then I have this thing that attaches to the servo, and I've kind of made a receiving plate for it. Oh, right. Really? So, yes, so it bolts th from the servo up to this, and then these set screws will hold that piece of metal that you wanted to use, which apparently is gone. So I thought was, um, you know, I'll get, you need to be able to get at that because you need to set the set screw on the servo. Mm -hmm. That's fine and all. But then you'll be able to put this in place and then you can use these set screws to further tighten the rod. So anything that can be done to make this more stiff. adjustable. And yeah, stiff and adjustable. So I was thinking we'll get this set up and then we'll have a really good idea of the length here. And then right now the 3D printer is making the pick end. So I think we'll get this done and then we'll attach the pick end. And then the next step after that will be the lift arm. While those guys work on that thing over there, whatever it is, I am working on the pick holder. So this is a black piece of plastic that I 3D printed with a set screw, which sets onto the actuator arm. And then I printed a tan, black and tan. Other piece that will hold the pick in and it'll have some set screws so it'll be adjustable. So they can put in different thicknesses of picks based off whatever style jam music they're playing. I don't know, I don't know anything about guitars. We're working on our guitar project and we decided to retrofit this um, Ernie Ball volume pedal into the control pedal for the um, guitar strumming mechanism. So we took off the original front plate, which I don't know where that's at, and Ben 3D printed this new panel which has our um, connector RJ45. Um, power? EtherCon. EtherCon, that's the proper term. And uh, audio out. So it's all gonna be one, uh, one handy cord. The power is gonna go into here, it's either gonna be 12 volts or 9 volts, and that is something that's standard for guitar pedals and that kind of thing. We're gonna regulate it to five volts with this um, 7805 voltage regulator. That's gonna get sent out to the guitar. Uh, the guitar itself will have a microcontroller and then the trim pots which actually tell it how far it can go in each direction. Because if you want to have this out further here, let's say you adjust it out like this for a different sound, the extremity of it will be different than if you're doing it down here. Because I, I hear that you get different sounds from guitar depending on where you strum it. And then once we kind of have a better idea of how that's going to work, then we'll, we'll make the lift mechanism. So it's better to put the micro here because yeah, basically that will send power and the pedal signal to the micro. That way we don't have to have two cables going into the guitar. That'll be handy. Yes. Okay, so now we're threading this wire through our uh, holes. We just finished drilling. Um, this is the voltage regulator. We're actually placing it on the outside of the chassis here because it needs a good heat sink because it's going to be dissipating some uh, power. Yeah, it looks like we put it in backwards. So while those guys work on that thing over there, I'm going to make these little pillow blocks 
so we can see how well the, the slides through two pieces of brass and if it's going to wobble too much. Okay, let's try going off. I am um, soldering these connections up inside of our control pedal for the guitar strumming action. I'm adding these caps. That's going to help stabilize the output from our voltage regulator. And then we have our special connector here. EtherCon. EtherCon. That we're going to be sending all of our control signals, power, and audio back to come out this quarter inch jack. Oh hey there, I was just checking the Ben Heck Show Facebook page and Carl had a question about what kind of electronics driver board he should use for a 3D printer. What I usually suggest to people is to check out the PrinterBot printer board. Now you can get this at printerbot.com and what it is is a all-in-one solution. It has your AVR microcontroller driver right there, a power input from like a PC power supply, pretty easy to use. Uh, your MOSFETs to control your heat, four stepper motors, and your end stops, and even a micro SD card so you can print directly from the board and not even need a computer. I've used this before, it works, it's simple, and it's cheap. It's like $129. It's like the cost of two Arduinos. Uh, you really can't get much better than this. PrinterBot, printer board. Fluke and Element 14 present Lessons in Multitasking. Can Marcio read a tech manual, order parts, and cross the street all at the same time? Oh, yes, hello. I'm trying to find out the, the stock levels of the parts list I sent you yesterday. Yeah, I'm not sure if... No, Marcio can't. But thanks to the Fluke Connects 3000 series test tools, Marcio can increase safety by taking readings in a separate location than the point of measurement, measure three-phase circuits simultaneously without having to make separate connections, and make readings by shutting down moving equipment, connecting, and then reading the equipment under operation. <coughs> Do more at once. Sorry about that. Just got hit by a car just now. Visit okay. Element 14 today for quality Fluke products and all your test and measurement needs. All right, what's going on here today, Ben? So, this is what I did. I have these two pillow blocks that the brass rod is going into. Then I use a die to put threads on either end so we can put some block nuts on. And this basically gives us a vertical position, you know, if the, if the pick is up or down. So you can do only down strokes, only up strokes, or have it be automatic or manual. Mm -hmm. Then this hamburger looking thing on the servo, you clamp the rod into it and it, it will be adjustable so you can bring us in or out. Lengthen this uh, this arm here. Yeah, because I guess you have different sounds based off where you are over this hole. Yep. That's what I read on the interwebs. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is going to go back and forth. We only have one string on right now, but we'll make sure that it can go across all six strings. So we'll just do a back and forth test to make sure that server works, and then we'll hook up your pedal. All right, sounds good. I'm a hobo with a new one string. All right, now that we know it goes back and forth, instead of having to just go back and forth, let's connect it to the potentiometer on your pedal. Sending. Okay, give it a try with the pedal. Let's give it a try. Now this person will be using it with their left hand, so that will be a down strum. Oh yeah, so the pedal is down and up. Okay, that should be nice and intuitive. Yeah. You obviously wired it that way on purpose, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Okay, we have it set up with some strings. Rusty, if you can do the chords, I will do this and I guess try to make me sound good. And make it sound good. All right, here we go. Effective gravity. What? It didn't affect the gravity there. Ah, okay, we'll have to keep that in mind. Well, there's going to be an adjustment here, yeah. All right. Ready? in for
for a special treat. We have Ben Heck and the Hall Effect! Oh, for today! 